Good morning, y'all. Today we are crossing Nevada and entering Utah. Now, for the last few months, I've felt a hankering for the desert. You know, today we're gonna be deep in it. We're gonna get it today. Yeah, so I'm gonna take my time, really kind of enjoy this. Uh, I literally just downloaded off of iTunes an eight hour playlist called Stoner slash Desert Rock. So I'm gonna be channeling those vibes, kind of like, a few weeks ago I watched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas again, and just that I'm gonna channel that vibe. It, I, I'm all hyped, you know? So today the, uh, the cinematography, the filming, might be a little bit goofy, but that's just me having fun, man. We're gonna go get real vibey, real mysterious in the desert today, and I am amped. Let's get it. I also wanted to mention that I'm not taking the, uh, the straight shot route across. If I was going for straight up time, I would actually be crossing Nevada on Highway 80, which is to the north of us right now. Um, I did, however, want to get a bit deeper in it. You know, I kind of like, I want to experience Nevada the way that I have it in my head, which is just like a two lane highway going straight forever through the desert. So instead of going on 80, I came down a little bit and I am on Highway 50. So we're gonna take Highway 50, a slightly smaller, more windy road through like some more towns and stuff, and uh, gonna cross Nevada that way. Yeah, let's see what you do. It's a bit cooler out, it's a bit overcast. I did plan to spend this entire day overheating and getting sunburned, so man, I'll take it. But yeah, we're out here on the road, desert vibes, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, sprawling town of Eli, Eli? I don't know, it's spelled E-L-Y, Nevada. I'd like to talk about something real quick, something that just happened to me. Um, I was passing through the town I was just in, got some lunch and whatever, drove a bit out of town, found a random pull off by a dirt road to just sit and eat some lunch and just chill, look at the view. Pickup truck came down the dirt road next to me and it stopped. And the guy got out and walked right up to me and um, he was kind of gnarly looking, you know? like. No shirt on, very sun damaged skin, covered in tattoos, not great tattoos, honestly. And um, turned out to be the nicest dude in the world. He just saw uh, the skateboard that's you can see through the window of my car, came to just throw some respect at me, say like he skates in this little town here. And um, what I'm getting at is like, don't be afraid of random people when you're out in places like this, you know? If somebody's trying to fuck with you, you'll know it real quick. But Pretty much everybody else isn't. People just want to talk to you, you know? People get sketched out at each other. People are like almost scared to interact with people they don't know. But yeah, especially when you're in these really rural, really out there parts of the country, it's really important to keep an open mind. The people that come up to you and want to talk to you, they're not trying to fuck with you. And if they are, you'll know. But yeah, I just wanted to say that, like, come into every situation like this with uh, positivity. Don't assume the worst. Spaces 
that are this wide open and empty and sparse, it's art in a way. Obviously it's beautiful, but in its desolation, in its uncompromising, almost brutality, that's a strong word, but the fact that it is uncompromisingly huge, it creates a very deep sense of awe, and through that the art of it comes through, through that the beauty of it comes through. Uh, I spent the last like half hour thinking about a few years ago when I actually lived for a year in Europe, uh, in Spain, I had a job there. And I remember one of the most difficult things to get used to about living in Europe, having grown up in the States, was the absolute absence of this kind of out there wilderness. You know, even in beautiful natural settings in Europe, there's a village in every valley. And I just think about my friends there and how much it would blow their mind to bring them here. All of North America, this kind of thing also exists in Central and South America. We're all very, very privileged to live in a place that constantly bombards you with this level of majesty. So yeah, just a little something to think about. <laughs> the end of our time on the highway today. See that mountains? We're about to uh, transition onto National Forest Road, go up into those mountains, um, and find an appropriate spot to camp. Windy as hell out here, so hopefully we can find a place that's shelter. substitute for a lift of 4 by 4 So right now it's doable. Um, if it gets much worse, I'll start thinking twice, but hey, fingers crossed. I may be speaking soon, but uh, I'm kind of cautiously optimistic. Uh, lucky enough, I've had this car for like six years and put about 100k miles on it. And uh, I know what it can and can't do. And ripping dirt roads is literally what a Subaru Impreza was built for. So uh, she's crushing it. Well, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Things were going pretty good until, uh, yeah, the last like half mile before the pass, it just, I rounded a bend and it was evident that you needed either a lifted 4x4 or a full on ATV to pass through that. It is what it is, you know, to take a risk. Sometimes it doesn't quite go the way you're expecting pretty funny um on my way up to that point i passed three different atvs first dude did not even say hello to me just gave me this look like what the fuck are you doing out here and second dude pulls up laughing and says so you're not lost and i'm like nope he's like all right keeps going third dude comes around he's like i imagine you're gonna knock the bottom out of that thing before you take it to the top i'm like yeah he's like yeah and wouldn't you know it next turn around the bend and uh it's way beyond what this car can do cut that loss we're still gonna find a good place to camp so what can you do had to take the first l you know but uh it's not that big of a deal really for now he was beautiful but yeah overall really really amazing day crossed some crazy wide open shit and uh yeah it was everything i hoped for so i uh, hope you all are stoked on this as well um I'll show you the sunset. All right, so uh, I just like put the rain fly on, enjoyed the sunset. Really, really amazing place, really peaceful out here. 
took out my contacts, uh, ate a bit of food, and read a good book. So I'm probably just going to read until it gets dark and then go to sleep because uh, I'm pretty beat. So see y'all in the morning. All right, good morning, y'all. Another beautiful morning out here. Just took some time to uh, take down camp, do a little bit of exercises, check on my car. Miraculously, uh, still got enough air in all the tires. Uh, she burned a little bit of oil, so I just topped off the oil and a bit of coolant. But uh, other than that, car handled it like a champ. Today, however, will be the most demanding day for this car because I'm crossing Colorado today. So there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of high altitude, a lot of climbing. Should be a really beautiful day though. I'm excited to share it with you guys. Let's uh let's get on the road. for a little while now um, passed through the beautiful town of Grand Junction Colorado and um, yeah pretty soon here hoping to start getting up into the mountains because I'll tell you what down here it's hot it is like over 90 degrees right now and the first traffic jam of the trip um, yeah I-70 Western Colorado massive road work and everybody's got their toys their campers their boats and everything and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mess. here at uh, Vail Pass just shows you guys the panorama that's really beautiful up here um, I also definitely feel that I've been living at sea level and we're near 11,000 feet so kind of tough to breathe and I definitely feel like I would need like a week of being up here before I felt actually kind of cardiovascularly healthy at this altitude but yeah so we're heading down now the car is gonna like that uh, my lungs are gonna like that. But man, look at these mountains out front. Pretty easy looking, you know? I also will say that um, crossing Colorado here on I-70, sure, it's really beautiful, you guys have seen it, but it's probably 
the least scenic and most crowded way to cross Colorado. I lived in Colorado uh, when I was 18. I went to a little school in a little town here, and I've since crossed this state a couple times. And I would definitely say that I-70 is probably the last way I would do this. Route 50, that is the route that I took through Nevada, also continues on through Colorado, and that's sick. Like, it's awesome. So if y'all are looking to cross Colorado at any point, I'd probably recommend going on 50. And you can go down, cross Monarch Pass, uh, go through Salida, all that good stuff, and it's, it's really scenic. Yeah, so I guess I just had a lot to get off my chest. I love the Rockies. They don't replace the Cascades in my heart. Now I'm heading on 70 down to Denver, and I have a strong suspicion that I'm gonna get caught in some Denver traffic because it is a Sunday afternoon in a city where everybody's outdoorsy and everyone's going to go get it. Side note, nothing in the world as a skier would bum me out more than getting caught in traffic on my way up the mountain. And from what I understand from my friend who lives in Denver, that is absolutely a reality in the front range. So, I mean, take the battle to the good, but yeah. All right, I'm done being all negative and all judgy. It's beautiful, we're gonna go drive and see a good friend of mine who I haven't seen, like, two plus years, so yeah, I'm stoked. So, we're in Denver traffic. And I know this is the reality for a lot of other cities that are like adjacent to great outdoor opportunities. I know it's true in Seattle and Salt Lake City and the like. I can see it being worth it though. Like, you know, if you need to be in a city for your career, that's just what it has to be. You know, you're gonna be alongside the 100,000 other people who love to play in these mountains. And who can blame them? I mean, you know, it's the Colorado Rockies. But yeah, it's just the unfortunate side effect. But uh, we're in it, we're gonna get to Denver when we get there. And uh, yeah, just uh, patience, patience and clarity. You know?